In this video, we will explore the 20 most commonly asked questions in a digital marketing interview. We will provide comprehensive answers to help you prepare and succeed in securing your dream job. 1. How would you define digital marketing and its key objectives? Digital marketing refers to the use of online mediums to promote products or services. It's a strategic, customer-focused approach that allows businesses to connect with their audience across various digital channels. Key objectives can vary depending on the specific needs of a business, but they often include increasing brand awareness, generating leads, improving customer engagement, driving sales, and enhancing customer loyalty. It also aims to measure and optimize the effectiveness of these efforts through data analysis to maximize ROI. 2. What are the main channels or components of digital marketing? Digital marketing encompasses numerous channels and components designed to reach and engage potential customers. Some of the major ones include Search Engine Optimization SEO This is the process of optimizing a website to rank high on search engine result pages, increasing the amount of organic, non-paid, traffic. Pay-per-click PPC Advertising these are ads that businesses pay for each time a user clicks on them. They may appear on search engines, social media platforms, and other websites. Content marketing. This involves creating and distributing valuable content designed to attract, engage, and convert a targeted audience. Social media marketing. This involves using social media platforms to promote a product or service, engage with the audience, and increase brand awareness. Email marketing. This is a direct form of marketing that involves sending promotional messages to a group of people via email. Affiliate marketing. This is where a business rewards one or more affiliates for each visitor or customer brought by the affiliate's marketing efforts. Influencer marketing. This involves partnering with influential people in your industry to promote your products or services to their followers. Each of these channels has its own set of strategies and techniques and their use depends on the nature of the business, its target audience, and its marketing objectives. 3. Can you explain the difference between SEO and SEM? SEO, or search engine optimization, is a technique used to increase a website's visibility on organic or natural search engine result pages, SERPS. This is achieved by optimizing the website's content and structure to make it more attractive to search engines. On the other hand, SEM, or search engine marketing, is a broader concept that includes SEO. It involves other methods to increase visibility in SERPS, such as paid advertising. While SEO aims to provide better organic search results, SEM uses paid advertising methods to appear on top of search results. To put it simply, if you want to gain traffic through organic search, utilize SEO. But if you want to gain traffic quickly by paying for it, use SEM. 4. What metrics do you consider most important when evaluating digital marketing campaign? When evaluating the success of a digital marketing campaign, certain metrics are essential. They provide a clear picture of the campaign's effectiveness and areas for improvement. Conversion rate. It measures how many visitors to your website or landing page took the desired action, such as making a purchase or filling out a form. Click-through rate, CT, or it shows the percentage of people who clicked on your ads or links out of the total number who viewed them. Cost per click, CPC, it is the price you pay for each click in your PPC, pay-per-click marketing campaigns. Bounce rate. It refers to the percentage of site visitors who leave your website after viewing only one page. A high bounce rate could indicate that your content isn't engaging or relevant to visitors. Return on investment, ROI, it tells you how much revenue you've made in relation to the cost of your marketing efforts. Traffic sources, it helps identify where your visitors are coming from, allowing you to gauge the effectiveness of your SEO, SEM, social media, and other marketing strategies. Remember, the key is not just to track these metrics, but to understand what they mean and how they can guide your digital marketing strategies. 5. 
How do you approach keyword research for SEO and PPC campaigns? Keyword research forms the backbone of any solid SEO and PPC campaign. My approach is to first understand the brand, its products or services, and its competitors. I use tools like Google Keyword Planner and SEM Rush to find the most relevant and high volume keywords related to the business. I then group these keywords into themes to create a structured keyword map. For PPC, I also focus on finding high intent keywords that are likely to convert and include them in the ad groups. I prioritize long tail keywords to capitalize on specific searches and reduce competition. It's also imperative to regularly review and update the keyword list as search trends evolve. 6. What tools do you use regularly in your digital marketing work? The digital marketing landscape is vast and constantly evolving, requiring the use of various tools to effectively execute strategies and campaigns. Some of the tools I frequently utilize include Google Analytics for tracking website traffic and user behavior, SEM Rush for SEO and competitor analysis, Hootsuite for social media management, and MailChimp for email marketing. I also use BuzzSumo for content research and Canva for designing visually appealing graphics. For project management and collaboration, Trello and Slack are invaluable. While these are just a few tools in my arsenal, I always strive to stay abreast of emerging technologies that could enhance my digital marketing efforts. 7. How do you stay updated on the latest digital marketing trends and algorithm changes? I make it a point to stay informed about the latest digital marketing trends and algorithm changes by regularly reading industry publications such as Search Engine Journal, Moz Blogs, and Marketing Land. Podcasts like Marketing Over Coffee and Social Media Marketing Talk Show are also great sources of information. I am a part of several online communities where digital marketing professionals share their insights and experiences. I also attend webinars and industry conferences whenever possible. This helps me stay in tune with the evolving landscape of digital marketing and adapt my strategies accordingly. 8. Can you walk me through your process for developing a digital marketing strategy? Developing a digital marketing strategy begins with defining the business goals and understanding the target audience. This includes identifying their needs, preferences, online behavior, and the digital platforms they frequently use. Once these aspects are clearly defined, we proceed to set specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound SMART objectives. We then analyze the competition to gain insights into their strategies, strengths, and weaknesses. This data helps us in shaping our own unique strategy that is competitive and effective. Content plays a crucial role in a digital marketing strategy. Therefore, we develop a content strategy that aligns with our business goals and resonates with our target audience. Next, we select the appropriate digital marketing channels such as SEO, SEM, social media, email marketing, etc. based on the audience's preferences and our business objectives. Finally, we implement the strategy, monitor its performance using key performance indicators, KPIS, and adjust it if necessary. This process is ongoing as we continually strive to improve and adapt to changes in the digital landscape. Note, each strategy is tailored to the specific needs of the business and its audience, so this process can vary. 9. What's your experience with content marketing? How do you measure its success? Content marketing remains an integral part of my digital marketing career. My experience spans across various industries, where I've crafted and executed multiple effective content strategies. I believe that valuable, relevant content is key to attracting and retaining an audience. Measuring the success of content marketing involves looking at several indicators. Primarily, I rely on engagement metrics such as likes, shares, comments, and time spent on page. High engagement indicates that the content resonates with the audience. I also consider lead generation and conversion rates. 
If a piece of content leads to an increase in inquiries or sales, it is considered successful. Lastly, I look at search engine rankings. Quality content should improve a website's SEO, leading to higher visibility on search engines. Remember, the ultimate goal of content marketing is to provide value to the audience while achieving business objectives. 10. How would you increase organic traffic to a website? My approach to increasing organic traffic primarily involves implementing strong SEO practices. This includes keyword research and integration, meta descriptions, and creating quality content that provides value to the user. I would also focus on enhancing the site's user experience, making sure it's user friendly, easy to navigate, and loads quickly. Additionally, maintaining an active blog and promoting content on social media platforms can be beneficial. Backlinking strategies, such as guest posting on reputable blogs, can also significantly improve organic traffic. It's important to remember that these strategies take time, and patience is key when working to increase organic traffic. 11. What factors do you consider when optimizing a landing page for conversions? In optimizing a landing page for conversions, several factors should be taken into consideration. Firstly, the design and layout of the page should be clean, professional, and easy to navigate. Secondly, the content on the page should be relevant, engaging, and persuasive. It should clearly communicate the value proposition and benefits of the product or service being offered. Thirdly, the call to action, CTA, should be prominent and compelling. Fourthly, the loading speed of the page is also crucial as slow loading pages can lead to high bounce rates. Lastly, the page should be mobile-friendly as a significant number of users access websites on their mobile devices. Additionally, regular testing and analysis of the page performance can help identify areas that need improvement. 12. How do you approach A. B. Testing in digital marketing campaigns? A. B. Testing in digital marketing campaigns is approached with a systematic plan. Initially, a hypothesis for the test is formulated, based on data insights and market research. The main goal could be to improve click-through rates, conversion rates, or any other measurable metric. Once the hypothesis is established, two versions of the marketing element, like an email, landing page, or ad, are created. One is the control version, which is the current version, and the other is the variant, which includes the changes we want to test. These two versions are then presented to a split audience, where half see the control version, and the rest see the variant. Data is collected on the performance of both versions, and then analyzed to see which version performed better according to the established goal. The version that performs better becomes the new control for future tests. This way, A, B testing helps to make informed decisions based on data rather than assumptions and continually optimize the marketing campaigns. 13. Can you explain the concept of marketing funnel and its stages? A marketing funnel is a strategy that involves guiding potential customers through different stages until they make a purchase. It's typically divided into four stages. 1. Awareness. This is the initial stage where potential customers become aware of your product or service. This stage involves reaching out to a broad audience through various marketing channels. 2. Interest. At this stage, potential customers have shown interest in your product or service. They might follow you on social media, sign up for your newsletter, or visit your website. 3. Decision. Here, potential customers are considering a purchase. They are weighing their options and comparing your offering to others. 4. Action. This is the final stage where potential customers make a purchase. Effective strategies at this stage can include offering discounts, free shipping, or a bonus product. Remember, after a purchase, it's important to continue engaging with customers to encourage repeat purchases and referrals. The marketing funnel concept is essential in digital marketing as it helps businesses understand customer behavior, 
tailor their marketing strategies, and optimize conversions. It's a tool that guides the customer journey, right from the first point of interaction to the final purchase. Understanding each stage allows marketers to tailor their approach, ensuring they deliver the right message at the right time, ultimately driving sales and fostering customer loyalty. 14. What strategies do you use for improving email open rates and click-through rates? Improving open rates and click-through rates requires a multi-pronged approach. First, it's crucial to understand your audience. This means conducting research, gathering data, and identifying patterns. Second, compelling subject lines are a must. They should be clear, concise, and engaging. They should also give a hint of what the email contains, piquing the reader's curiosity. Third, the email content should be relevant and valuable. The more it resonates with the audience, the more likely they are to click through. Fourth, personalization can significantly increase both open rates and click-through rates. This could involve simply using the recipient's name or tailoring the content to their interests or past behavior. Finally, testing and analyzing results can help identify what works and what doesn't. This can inform future strategies and lead to continual improvement. 15. How do you measure ROI in digital marketing? To evaluate the return on investment, ROI, in digital marketing, I prefer to use several key metrics. It's essential to monitor conversion rates, customer acquisition cost, CAC, customer lifetime value, CLV, and sales revenue generated from digital marketing efforts. These metrics provide a clear picture of the financial impact of marketing activities. For example, by comparing the CAC with the CLV, I can determine if the marketing investment is profitable in the long run. If the CLV is significantly higher than the CAC, it means that the marketing efforts are paying off. Additionally, I consider the sales revenue generated from digital marketing campaigns. If a campaign leads to an increase in sales, it's a clear indication that the campaign is effective. However, if the sales remain constant or decrease, the campaign may need adjustments. In essence, measuring our OI in digital marketing requires a combination of different metrics that focus on financial results and customer behavior. By analyzing these metrics, I can identify the most effective strategies and make informed decisions to improve the marketing ROI. 16. What's your experience with social media marketing? Which platforms do you find most effective for B2B slash B2C? In my experience, social media marketing is a powerful tool for both B2B and B2C businesses. For B2B, LinkedIn has proven to be highly effective due to its professional nature, allowing companies to connect, network, and share content with other businesses. Twitter also has its merits for B2B, particularly for sharing industry news and updates. On the other hand, B2C marketing tends to thrive on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. These platforms offer a more casual environment, making it easier to engage with customers and create a brand personality. Instagram, specifically, is great for visual content, making it ideal for industries like fashion, food, or travel. Facebook's broad user base also makes it a versatile platform for reaching a wide range of consumers. In terms of effectiveness, it truly depends on the industry and target audience. It's imperative to understand where your target audience spends their time online and tailor your social media strategy accordingly. 17. How do you handle negative comments or feedback on social media? Handling negative feedback on social media requires tact and a customer-centric approach. My first step is always to acknowledge the comment and thank the user for their input, as this shows that their opinion is valued. I then strive to address their concerns in a respectful, understanding, and professional manner. It's important not to get defensive or argumentative. If necessary, I would take the conversation to a private channel like direct message or email. Sometimes, 
negative comments can provide valuable insights into areas for improvement. Therefore, I view them as an opportunity to learn and grow. 18. Can you explain the importance of mobile optimization in digital marketing? Mobile optimization is crucial in digital marketing due to the increasing number of users accessing information through their smartphones. Websites and digital content must be designed to fit and function properly on small screens, ensuring a positive user experience. This includes easy navigation, quick loading times, and clear, concise content. Google also prioritizes mobile-optimized sites in its search rankings, making it an essential component of effective SEO strategy. Additionally, mobile optimization allows marketers to reach their audience wherever they are, providing greater opportunities for engagement and conversion. Without proper mobile optimization, businesses risk losing potential customers who may become frustrated with a poor mobile experience and look elsewhere. Therefore, it's not just a nice-to-have, but a must-have in any digital marketing plan. 19. What's your approach to creating a content calendar? Creating a content calendar requires strategic planning and meticulous organization. Initially, I identify key dates, themes, or events relevant to the business that can be incorporated into the content. Then, I research trending topics or keywords related to the identified themes. Subsequently, I craft a content plan that includes the type of content, the platform it will be published on, and when it will be published. This plan is adjusted based on the performance analytics of previous posts and the evolving needs of the business. I use tools like Google Calendar or Trello to keep track of the content schedule. Regular team meetings are also essential for updating the calendar and maintaining alignment with the broader marketing strategy. 20. How do you use data analytics to inform your marketing decisions? Data analytics is a vital tool in making informed marketing decisions. Using analytics, I gain insights into customer behavior, preferences, and trends, which guide my decisions and strategy. For instance, if data shows high bounce rates on a specific page, I investigate and adjust accordingly, potentially improving user experience or content relevancy. Analytics also help monitor campaign performance. By analyzing metrics such as click-through rates, conversion rates, and ROI, I can see if campaigns are meeting their objectives and adjust as needed. Data analytics also enable accurate segmentation, personalization, and targeting, making marketing efforts more efficient and effective. Stay curious and keep learning about digital marketing trends to stay ahead of the game. If you found this video useful, please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Best of luck to you in your interview and future digital marketing career.